Hi there. So let's look at our next video or our next term for classification or our next basis of classification in the series of classification of cost. So we have looked at classification of cost according to nature where we said that cost is classified according to the element of cost when we spoke about the material cost, the labor cost, and the overhead. Then we also mentioned about the issue in relation to the difference between direct cost and then indirect cost. And I think I gave you about five differences between direct cost and then indirect cost. Then we came to classification of cost according to function. This is where we said that it is where the, we classify cost according to the various departments, according to the various activities that are undertaken within an organization. And so we have also looked at that. Then we came to, uh, in the last video, we came to classification of cost according to behavior. This is where we classify cost according to how the cost varies with output level. And we spoke about first cost, that it remains the same irrespective of the output level. We spoke about variable cost, that it changes with the output level. So the more you produce, the more variable cost you're gonna be incurring. The less you produce, the less variable cost you're gonna be incurring. Then we spoke about semi fixed and semi-variable cost. We said that these are costs that are characterized with a fixed component and also a variable component. Then we ended on step cost, which we say that it's a fixed cost, but within what? A certain level of activity, after which it becomes a variable cost. So it is a fixed cost within a certain level of activity, after which it becomes a variable cost. So that is what we mean by a step cost. Now the fourth base of classification that I want to share with you is Classification of cost according to production and non-production. So this is where we classify all costs we incur into production cost and then non-production cost. In other words, using this basis of classification, when we incur a cost, we will ask ourselves, does this cost relate to production? If it does, then we will classify it as production cost. Then, if it doesn't relate to production, then we will classify it as what? Non-production cost. So, all the costs we incur in the factory, in the production of the product. So, material cost, the direct labor cost we incur, the direct expenses we incur, the factory overheads that we incur on the production of the product. All of those things become production cost. Then, any other cost we incur, which is not directly related to the production of the product is classified as what? Non-production cost. All right? So that is classified as non-production cost. So example of that could be selling and distribution cost. That, can, that is a non-production cost. Finance overheads, that can be a, a, a non-production cost. Administration overheads, that can also be what? Non-production cost. So these are what we refer to as the basis or if you want the ways through which cost can be classified nature function behavior and production remember i touched on in the introduction about avoidable unavoidable controllable and what uncontrollable right i touched on that now based on this classification we are going to be required almost always to prepare some form of cost cut or cost sheet. Even if the examiner doesn't require us or doesn't ask us to prepare the cost sheet, he may ask us to prepare the profit statement. So whilst we are preparing the profit statement, definitely the knowledge of cost classification will be coming on board and we need to utilize that knowledge and bring it to bear. So this is the pro forma of the cost cut that we will be using, which is based on everything I've discussed with you here on the cost classification. So if we look at the cost cut, first we bring our direct costs. So we bring the direct material cost that we incur, the direct labor cost that we incur, the direct expenses that we incur, I put overheads there. The direct expenses that we incur. Now remember when I was telling you about the differences between 
uh, direct costs and indirect costs. I told you that direct costs are costs that can be what? Or summation of all direct costs gives us prime costs, right? And the summation of all indirect costs gives us what? Overhead. So when we sum direct material, direct labor, and direct overhead, that gives us what? The prime cost. And that is what you see there as the prime cost. Okay? So that's what you see here in the second column as the prime cost. Then we say add factory overhead. Add factory overhead. So when it comes to factory overhead, we're going to have fixed factory overhead and what? Variable factory overheads, right? So we will have fixed factory overheads and then variable factory overheads. So we're going to be having that. We add the factory overheads. When we add the factory overheads to the prime cost, we are going to be obtaining what we call production or factory cost. How we got that? When we add the factory overheads to the prime cost, we will get production or factory cost. Once we have the production of factory cost, remember, we are determining the total cost of the product. So once we have the production cost, we now add non-production overhead. So this is where selling and distribution overhead comes in, administration overhead comes in, financing overhead comes in. So all those non-production overheads, we now add them to the factory or production cost, and this is what gives us the total cost. Now, why is it important for you to understand this cost sheet or this cost card? It is important because when you are undertaking or when we are looking at a relevant cost analysis, we'll be using something like this. Or when you are a company producing a product, you are rendering a service, and someone comes to you and contracts you to do something, the way you will be able to charge the person in order for you to make profit is to first find out how much cost you're going to be incurring on the product, right, or on the service. So once we are able to calculate the total cost we are going to be incurring on the production of the product or on the rendering of the service or on the undertaking, then we can now determine our profit margin. So when I add profit margin to the total cost, so maybe let me soup it up and put it in. So let's say add the profit. Now those profits can be a markup or a margin. And I'll touch on that one in another video when we are dealing with profit statement, right? I'll touch on that. So when we add the profit margin we expect to make, or the profit markup we expect to make, remember, markup is on cost and margin is on selling price. So if our profit markup is 25% and our total cost that we have incurred is say 200,000, or we will incur is 200,000, then we take 25% of the 200,000, add it up, and that will give us what we call the selling price or the quoted price. So this is why it is important to understand the pro forma of the cost sheet or the cost card. So when it comes to cost classification, I think these are the major things that you need to understand. So make sure you go over these three videos once again to understand how the various costs are classified. And most importantly, if you forget anything at all, not the, not the cost card. So comment below with your questions and I'll be answering them in the next video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video.